You're listening to the Screen Team on 930 KWOC. Are you okay? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm going to make him an offer again with you. Toto? I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. To infinity and beyond! Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Please, what does it always mean? This is Junior. That's his name. Henry Jones Junior. Like Indiana. We named the dog Indiana. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I am your father. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Bond. James Bond. And now the screen team on News Radio 930 KWOC. It's Saturday, it's 6 p.m. It is the screen team, and it's all brought to you by the fine folks at Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers, 33 Productions, and Popper Bluff Drywall. With us on the panel today is Jake Whitlow and Jamie Hickson. Guys, how are we doing today? Doing just fine, Chris. Fantastic. It's good good to have you guys on the show today. And guys, this is a a music-themed kind of uh, movie review show we're doing today. You guys are both uh, awesome musicians, so uh, this is going to be cool, man. It's going to be cool. I didn't even get that. You didn't get it? I'm just kidding. Dude, I can can explain it to you, but we only have a half an hour, man. (laughs) Our first show, or our first movie we're going to review is uh, a movie called (laughs) Almost Famous. This is one of my favorite films of all time. It's definitely in my top ten. Uh, It was directed by Cameron Crowe, and it's kind of a a semi-autobiographical film. It's uh, kind of loosely based on his experiences uh, working for Rolling Stone magazine as a kid and, uh, you know, touring with the Allman Brothers Band, Led Zeppelin, Neil Young, The Who, you know, great bands like that. And this was uh, kind of a fictional piece of of, uh, a young... uh, it's aspiring writer working for Rolling Stone and touring with a, a fictional band called Stillwater. And uh, that's basically what the, the film is about. And um, I'm not a musician, obviously. I don't have the... Uh, I don't have but the, you love music. I love music. I don't have the, the patience or the talent to be a musician. But being in this, uh, watching this film makes me feel like I am a musician and I am, and I get to be on tour with this band. It, yeah. This movie, <laughs> it, it really makes you a part of everything that's going on. I love it. It definitely, I, I love that movie for for the same reason. Being a musician, you know, I, it feels like it's a little bit closer to home. Uh, I haven't experienced the tour thing. I've had my chances, but just turned them down. But it's something I've always wanted to do. So I'm yeah. just like... Now I have high expectations if I ever do tour with a band. I was like, it's got to be like almost famous. We got to trade groupies for Heineken. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to go back to the 70s, I think. Uh, I'm sure there's there's probably some that do that, but it's over in Europe. Yeah, there we go. Jamie, what did you think of this film? Do you like it? Uh, yeah, I, I really do like this film. Uh, I, I've followed Cameron Crowe's films over the years, and... Uh, it's it's one of his better, in my opinion. Uh, the one scene that everybody seems to love in this movie is one of my least favorites. For, I don't know why. The part on the bus when everybody's kind of in turmoil and and, uh, and then they, they sing Tiny Dance and, and I'm like, eh, okay. Oh, it gets my heartstrings every time, man. <laughs> Does it? Uh, I don't know. And maybe that's what it what what my problem is with it is it kind of it feels it feels like it was put there to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, well, that that makes sense that they're kind of they're trying to bring everybody back together. And uh, I, I mean, I see how I think, it works. So. I think it's important because I think music does do that. I think music yeah. can. Maybe I just don't like that song as well. <laughs> Saul well, Yelton. I, I know what you're saying. It yeah. is the most movie scene in the movie. Yeah, if you know exactly. What you, yeah, yeah. That's kinda, I kind of understand what you're going yeah. for, though. Yeah, I, I get that. It's like you've got to have this coming back together moment to, you yeah. know, everybody in somewhat happy in the movie. Yeah, because the stuff that happens between Stillwater and the band, a lot of, I mean, that kind of stuff really happens because, you know, I've been at rehearsals with bands where somebody is kind of brewing about something mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be anything directly related to the band, but then it, it busts out and they're like, and they throw a fit or whatever yeah. and threaten to quit or something. And uh, and then you kind of, you know, talk about things like, hey, you know, we're all friends, you know. For the most part, you can kind of even it out, but there's some bands that don't survive it. They just, you know, they people to clash or whatever, and they may make good music, but they don't get along personally, and then that's the end of it. You know, so yeah. 
But, um, that's what happens, especially with the, the T-shirts or the, the, was it the poster or T-shirt. <laughs> it was the T-shirts. It was yeah. the T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we got all the rest of the bands back there blurry. You can't even see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a great story about uh, the NXS. They were they uh, wanted to do it. Rolling Stone wanted to do a cover with NXS, but mm-hmm. they only wanted Michael Hutchins, and he refused to do it unless they put the whole band on the cover. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. That guy's yeah. super cool, super cool, and definitely a, a lost uh, lost legend. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah. Kate Hudson uh, stars in this film. This really kind of made her uh, career. Yeah. I think she got nominated for an Oscar for this, too. What did you guys think of Kate Hudson? Did you guys like her? Uh, that's Penny Lane. I did. Yeah. Pen- Penny Lane uh, can be a really good character, but at the same time, she can be – There's there's certain points to where it's just like – why you got to be that way? You know what I mean? <laughs> like some people that you know, we know in real life. You know. It's just like, it's one of those characters. It's like, she plays the character well, but it's, it's those characters that always, that always bother me. And in, in one of the other movies we, that we're doing for the show today, mm-hmm. uh, there's a character like that. But anyway, it's just one of those characters like, well, you're supposed to not ever be sure about this character's true loyalties or intentions, you know? Yeah. So one of my, it, one of my favorite scenes is, uh, um, Penny Lane had uh, induced a little too many, you know, too many drugs, and um, they show the the medical ambulance coming in, and all of a sudden you hear uh, Stevie Wonder's, um, you know, song uh, play in the background, and you just see, uh, you know, the the main character just look at her, you know, just with all this love and endearment and stuff like that, and she's getting her stomach pumped. It's just like it's one of the weirdest, but it's it's cool because that song is in there, and yeah. you know the 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 music in this movie really really I think you know makes the makes the film. Most I was looking at some some trivia on this film, and you know most films spend about a million dollars budget wise on on music, and this this film spent almost four million. Oh wow! In in uh, in budget, so. Uh, this movie is this movie is awesome, but you know what's better? Have you guys seen the the uh, director's cut of this? Uh-uh. The I untitled. Have I haven't. Oh, you know, it's awesome! It's like an, an extra hour worth of of uh, material, oh, wow. and it's it's just awesome. That's what Cameron Crow check that out. Cameron Crow wanted to call this movie untitled. Untitled, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the studio wasn't wasn't having it, man. But uh, <laughs> definitely uh, one of my all time personal favorites. And this movie also kind of drove uh, Zoe Deschanel. Uh, into the limelight as well. She yeah. was, uh, and even though she had a pretty minor character, she yeah. was she was pivotal, uh, pivotal. Yeah, you know, especially since she's the sister of the main character and all that. So, yeah, almost famous. If you get a chance, check it out, man. It's on DVD. Coming up after the break, we're going to review the new DVD release, Inside Lewin Davis. That's next on today's talk nine thirty KWO.